This video is a continuation of the single distance event video. And in this video, we're going to review an event that has multiple distances. Okay, so we're going to download the entrance for the Pocatello 50, which has three distances. And if your three distances start um, at different times, well, the software allows you to set the start time for each individual distance. So in our case, we have a 50 miler, 50K, and a 20 miler. If all of them start at the same time, simply click on the click on the icons as quick as possible, and you're only going to be off a couple seconds. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and start the 50 miler clock, um, and you'll see that it's independent. And um, as you uh, and you can adjust the start time, and we'll go ahead and do that by clicking, uh, changing it. Um, and now we have the 50 miler shows that it started four hours ago. And let's just assume that there's some really fast people out there and they're running uh, record times. Uh, we're going to type in 503. 503, Justin Angle. It calls out Justin's name, 505. 505, Darla Stoop. Uh, 507, let's say, 507. 507, John Barley. Now, let's, let's say we um, uh, the 50K clock hasn't started, but... For some reason, we key in a wrong time or a wrong bib number. Um, it's going to notify us that the 50k clock has not started. Okay, so um, uh, there's some checks and balances in there to make sure that that we're doing everything correct. Uh, so go ahead and you can start the other clocks, and you'll see that here in this case, I started the 50k and the 20 miler pretty close, but I'm still a second off. So you can always go in and adjust these start times, like I said before, and we can change them to uh, so that they're the same time. And now you get them synchronized and clicking about the same time. Okay. Um, also, when you're dealing with a multiple distance event, sometimes you have participants that want to um, either change distance, go up or down in the event. That's not a problem. Simply click on their uh, click on their event, um, or I'm sorry, click on their their name and change their event to 50k. Let's say, and he'll we'll see, hit save, and it switches that that person to the 50k. They keep their same bib number, but they're still going to be. Here's Frank. Here we changed him from the 50 miler to the 50k. He's still 502. So the the bib number should not be. The, the bib number may may have been set originally to coincide with the distance they run, but do not change the the bib number during the event. Just simply keep the dis keep the bib number, and we change what distance that bib number is uh, participating in. Okay, the computer handles everything, so just um, simply use use the computer to your advantage by simply clicking on the record, changing the distance, hitting save, boom, they're they're added to the other event. Okay. Um, another thing to uh, um, to consider uh, is um, uh, if you want to keep your lists clean, um, you can simply uh, if if when during your check-in process. Uh, you realize that someone uh, uh, didn't check in and you still have their bib numbers and you've started the race, you can tag them as um, did, uh, did not start. And when you hit save, you'll have your did not starts over here. Um, likewise, if you want to tag someone as did not finish, you can have a DNS, uh, DNF and DNS tabs as well. Um, really, Ultra Sign Up doesn't publish DNS and DNFs, um, so it really doesn't affect the results. But what it does affect is um, uh, sort of your user interface while you're working on the file, and it kind of helps you uh, identify who's still out on the course or not. Um, uh, that should be it, and if you have any questions, as always, call our 800 number up here, and we would be glad to help you out. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.